Hey, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. As always, it is Nick here, back to your daily crypto news and analysis. And today we are going to be talking about Ripple and XRP as well as the vast majority of crypto and finance. And with that being said, I hope that you are all having a beautiful day or a beautiful night if you guys are out there in the world. One of the biggest things that everyone has been focused on with XRP is, well, the performance. It has been terrible compared to all the other coins in this market. And we do question, right? Were we wrong about XRP? Now, in this video, I'm, go I'm going to be talking about it because if we look at the one month span, it's down about 19%. On the one year span right now, going all the way back to like February of 2023, we're still up about 24%. Seven day span, down 3.4. One day span, down about like 2.5. The big thing that I will say right now around XRP and if you guys are new to the space, you haven't been around for a while, XRP lags behind the entire market. I have been watching XRP for well over, at this point in time, almost six plus years. And it never surprises me when I see the, the retail crowd getting frustrated they're jumping out of XRP. They're going into other altcoins. And listen, I'm not here to persuade you to hold XRP. I personally don't care, right? Like, I, I, I'm here and I'm diversified within this space. I am a holder of XRP. I've been holding XRP for years. And the reason why I still hold XRP, the reason why I still focus on what XRP is doing and what Ripple is even doing with XRP is because I believe in the long-term view of utility reshaping the entire space and even reshaping real-world problems, meaning we are solving problems of inefficiencies around cross-border payments and movement of money. Now, again, while we do focus on that, are we also here to make money? 100%. Now, the reason why I bring that up is because nobody is forcing you to only hold XRP. And I highly advise against only holding just XRP. We can make a ton of money off of other altcoins while taking profits and putting them back into XRP. At times where we do see the sentiment around this space at an all-time low for XRP. Now, let's talk about what happened today. So for those that are unaware, yes, Chris Larson's main wallets, they got hacked. Now, Alex Cobb put out an interesting thing, and he said, Bitcoin wallet gets hacked, crickets. XRP wallet gets hacked. Ripple wallet just got hacked. XRP is done. RIP XRP holders. XRP is this, it's that. That's what we just saw all day today. But beyond that, even before the wallet hack, we were starting to sell off massively, even going all the way back to November, where we had the fake BlackRock ETF nonsense. And guess what? We are right back to where we were at before we had that spike up because of the BlackRock news. But for everyone that is concerned, when we look at what is going on here, right? There was no Ripple managed wallets that got compromised. It was just Chris Larson's personal addresses. Here we have yesterday, there was unauthorized access to a few of my personal XRP accounts, not Ripple. We were quickly able to catch the problem and notify exchanges to freeze the effective addresses. Law enforcement is already involved. And here we have, this is an isolated incident and Ripple wallets are secure. We're never compromised. We've confirmed nearly all the effective funds were converted out of XRP. We're working with law enforcement and have been advised that a significant portion of the funds have been frozen and are pursuing the remainder aggressively. So again, everyone was focused on this. There was a lot of FUD and it is all happening at a time where we are back down into my demand zone that I outlined days and days and days ago. Guys, I was talking about this demand zone while we started to break down below the EMAs. We were anticipating a drop here anyways. 
Things like this, this is all noise. The FUD, wallets getting compromised, all of this supports the moves down. And do I think that this is the end of this downward move? It might not be. That's why I have this 46 cent almost uh, target down here on the trend line. And guess what? Historically, going all the way back to December of 2020 with the SEC lawsuit announcement, this trend line has held up. We might get wicks below it, but for the most part, we almost daily close and weekly close above this all the time. So this will be a historical buying opportunity on XRP. Now, let's address the question, right? Were we wrong about XRP? Should we just jump out of XRP and jump into the next big flashy thing that's in the green candles? The simple answer, no, we were not wrong. The long-term answer is, let's address a few things. So why is there so much FUD and negativity about XRP? Well, here you guys have the 30-day performance on all coins in the top 20. We could see that XRP is down here. It's the third biggest loser on the 30-day span next to Matic and ADA. 60-day returns. This is where things start getting interesting because you can see ICP is up 137% almost. Avalanche up almost 50%. Solana up almost 50%. BNB up 30%. ADA up almost 24%. Polkadot up 20%. And the list goes on. And XRP, the biggest loser on the 60-day percentage gain. It's at negative 19%, almost 20%. Then we have the 90-day Percentage, percentage gain. And here's where we have the top three ones at 100 plus percent and many of the, uh, of the other ones up significantly as well. And again, XRP, the biggest loser. Now, if you are looking at this and saying, well, this confirms it, XRP is useless. You are thinking illogically. When we look at the top 100 as well, again, you could see all of the significant gain, gains. If we go to the negative on the 90-day average, XRP is still number three. But there's been a lot of red on the 30-day, the 60-day, and the 90-day on a lot of these altcoins and a lot of these players in the space. Now, yes, I will admit, XRP is one of the worst performers so far this season. But the thing to look back on, Let's go all the way back to January 1st, 2017. The beginning of the 2017-2018 bull run. This is where XRP hit that notorious all-time high that everyone has been chasing for years and years and years. Here you guys have it on the chart back here. It happened actually in January of 2018, but it all started, the bull run started in 2017. Now, the reason why I'm bringing this up is because look at the seven day percentage gains here. There's a lot of altcoins that are doing tremendous moves. And guess where XRP is sitting at? XRP on the seven day span, on the 24 hour, and even on the one hour is down. And this doesn't really change too much. For the most part, it started to gain a little bit on the seven day uh, percentage on January 15th. But beyond that, it wasn't a massive performer. During this time, there was altcoins that were jumping heavily. I mean, you can literally see this on the seven-day span as we go forward on in time. XRP, pretty much nowhere to be found. It's still at the bottom of the list. And this is something significant to mention. And the reason why I say that is because as we look at the space today, there is really no difference. Look at all of these percentage gains. We're talking about 100 plus, 200 plus, 300, all the way up to 1,000 plus percentage at some times, right? Here, here's a 1,500% move. But what happens next, right? Well, here you have XRP starting its run up. 544% gain. And we can see that it has a sell-off on the next week. But then in May, everything starts to look a little bit different. This is where XRP jumps into the number two spot and 
It stays there for one week. Next week, Ethereum starts to take over. And then XRP goes flat for the remainder of 2017, leading up all the way into December. And if we jump into November and December, this is where things get very interesting. Here you guys have XRP sitting at 23, almost 24 cents. Look at the rest of the gains here. Nobody, nobody is watching XRP. Nobody cares about XRP at this point. They think XRP already had its run. It's done. It's dead. Nobody cares about it. And then all of a sudden, right, XRP starts again. It's up 203% on the seven-day span. It's at 73 cents. Then next week, it's at a dollar, almost uh, five. Next week, XRP is at $2.30. And then the week after that, this is officially where it tops out. It's at $3.30, almost eight cents. XRP during 2017 into the beginning of 2018 was one of the largest winners. But did you see how long it took for XRP to actually make those gains while the entire space witnessed other altcoins doing tremendous gains. This is why I say that we are not wrong on XRP. It just takes a long time for XRP to catch up to the rest of the market. Now, I will admit, if we don't see an all-time high on XRP while we see Bitcoin making a new all-time high and all coins going absolutely crazy in an alt season and XRP does not create a new all-time high, I personally believe that there is a much bigger problem happening internally around XRP than there is that, we, that we're not seeing. This is where I would admit that, is it really worth holding XRP? Because we should see a new all-time high on XRP if Bitcoin makes a new all-time high and we get alt season. If we don't, we have to come to the realization that there is a much deeper problem here. But the reason why I bring all of this up is because we have been witnessing a lot of discussions all over X. A lot of people have been talking about it. Here we have from Bill Morgan. Again, no disrespect to anybody, but we do see here the three month snapshot of XRP and other top coins. It follows the market apparently. I know snapshots are a partial picture and can be misleading depending on the time frame. But it does call for asking, what is the explanation? Why is XRP the odd one out amongst these top coins? What irritates me is that people will say, but the whole market is down today, not just XRP, as if the above trend means nothing. And no, right? Like, this is not the case. XRP has been un uh, underperforming. But if you have been around this space for a while, XRP underperforms. It does. Until it no longer does. When we go back to 2020 and 2021, for example, everyone hated the price action because we were promised $10. Everyone thought that $10 was going to happen. But if we look back in time, and mind you, this is during a lawsuit, right, with the SEC, XRP still accomplished a 1,700% gain. If we bottom out here at 46 cents or so, and we repeat just that same move from 2021. Mind you, we're not in a lawsuit anymore. A 1,600, almost 1,700% gain would be taking us right to our original targets, which is around the $7 to $10 range. This would be around $8 on XRP. I would be very happy with that. Would everybody else be happy with that? We don't need to see $10. All we really need to do is break this all-time high. But outside of that, look back in time. XRP underperforms the entire time. Even during 2021, right? In the beginning of 2021, a lot of altcoins were doing tremendous gains. XRP barely moved until April. And even then, it still underperformed because it did not make a new all-time high. But we were still in the middle of a lawsuit. There was still a lot of scrutinization. It wasn't listed on major exchanges. It was a, a lot harder to get XRP. But even if we go back in 2017, 2018, you know, it did, it, it remained flat since 2013, 2014's high. 
during this entire time. It did not move at all for almost three years, and then it started to jump out. But even if we go to the all-time high back here, to the all-time high of 2017-2018, it was like 1,500 days. But there is also another great response to this by Moon Lambo. Um, and we have the above trend means nothing. It's true. Your observation is the same as what people observed in the second half of 2017. XRP was moving down or sideways while the rest of the market was ripping to the upside for months on end. It didn't mean anything because even months are barely visible when you zoom out on a chart. Even looking at a few months is just a short term snapshot. XRP legs behind in price action historically. This is provably true. Um, as far as why this is true, I don't know. People have been speculating on that for years. I'm only noting this price action is historically normal for, uh, for XRP. If Bitcoin hits a new all-time high and XRP doesn't that market cycle, that will be the point where I'll believe something is likely wrong. I mean, unless for some strange reason, pretty much no altcoins run. And that's why I said, like, if we have alt season, if we see all-time highs across the board and XRP is still lagging behind or it doesn't do anything, that's where I will be concerned. And I feel as though that is the best time to start moving away, right? Maybe diversifying heavily, maybe having XRP sit there, maybe one day we'll have a massive run. But I think that that is where we really kind of look at this space and say, all right, we were wrong. XRP wasn't the one. Let's move on. But until we see that, I feel as though a lot of people are overreacting. The retail crowd is getting loud yet again with their self-doubt, with the doubts about XRP, with, you know, FUD and things like that. But a lot of these people that are doubting XRP or FUDing on XRP, I feel as though they have not been around long enough to understand that price action on XRP, it sucks. It is one of the hardest holds in this space. But when it runs, this thing runs. That's what we are waiting on. That's what we have been waiting on. In my opinion, once we break that all-time high, we instantly flip into profit-taking mode on our profit bags because I do have a trade bag of XRP and then I have XRP that I just will not touch because I don't care to touch that. But in my opinion, anywhere between 5 to $10, that entire range there is for taking profits on XRP and making sure to pay yourselves for waiting so damn long. But we are already back into the demand zone. The news today about Chris Larson getting hacked and his, his wallets getting compromised, that was only to push us further into that demand zone. And it worked perfectly. So with that being said, I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys did, definitely leave a like, subscribe, turn notifications on if you guys more free content. You guys are more than welcome to follow me on Twitter and join the free Discord in the description below. And with that being said, guys, it's been Nick. Thanks for watching. Peace out.